different narcissists use different techniques in order to control and manipulate the people around them. In this video, I'm going to talk about a more subtle technique that narcissists use as opposed to overt, aggressive narcissists that yell and scream and demand things, some narcissists will pout or sulk quietly in order to get their way. You might see this more commonly from what we might call a victim narcissist or a vulnerable narcissist or maybe a covert narcissist. But this technique can be every bit as damaging as a more aggressive approach when it's done over and over and over again over a long period of time. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what I'm talking about with some examples of what I mean by this. And then I'm going to go over several reasons that some narcissists choose to do this to people and some tips on how you can avoid falling for these types of manipulations. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. So what exactly do I mean when I say that some narcissists will pout? or sulk instead of being demanding and aggressive and screaming and insulting people. Well, I have several examples I want to go over. And the first one is pretty specific because this actually happened to some people that I personally know. So with these people I know, there was a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend and they were middle-aged, so they're grown adults. And the boyfriend's parents came to live with him for a couple months while they were buying a house. Both the girlfriend and the boyfriend's mother enjoyed crochet. They both liked to crochet, just a coincidence. And one day the parents were gone. They were out shopping, doing something. And the girlfriend said to the boyfriend, hey, there's a sale at this yarn store. I'd like to go buy some yarn. And so the boyfriend was like, sure. And they went yarn shopping for maybe an hour or so. And when they got back to the boyfriend's house, the boyfriend's parents had returned and the boyfriend's mother was sitting on the couch watching TV when the girlfriend walked into the house with a big bag full of yarn. And the boyfriend's mother immediately said something like, oh, Oh, I wanted to go. I, w I would have wanted to go to the store and, and go yarn shopping. And although she didn't get nasty or, or insulting, she just was very disappointed. And then she sulked and was pretty pouty for the whole rest of the night. So I think this is a good example of somebody that's upset about something that they really don't have a right to be upset about. It's kind of a violation of boundaries for the mother to have expected to have been invited along on this little shopping trip. And in addition to this, instead of talking it out like a grown adult, she sat and sulked and pouted for the rest of the night, hoping that somebody was going to come back to her and offer her sympathy and apologize, which I'm happy to report did not happen. But instead of communicating and explaining why she was upset, she silently pouted and sulked. Another example of this pouty, sulky behavior would be if the narcissist is doing something. Maybe they're cooking a meal or maybe they're outside weeding the garden or maybe they're just cleaning the bathroom and you're doing something else. You're you've got your own project going, or maybe you're just sitting there watching TV, enjoying your day off, not thinking a thing about what's going on. And maybe an hour or two goes by when the narcissist is done with whatever they were doing. And now they come to you and they're all angry that you didn't try to help them. And maybe they don't even directly say this to you. Maybe if they were cooking, maybe they come to you with the food and they say, well, not that I needed your help or anything. <laughs> or maybe maybe they are a little more aggressive. 
But the point is you were sitting there unaware that somebody was upset, completely unaware that they wanted your help because they didn't verbalize it. They didn't communicate with you, but now you're going to be punished for not reading their mind. And for a particularly covert, pouty, vulnerable narcissist, they might not even tell you that they're upset. They might, if, they're, they, if they were out weeding the garden, maybe they come back into the house and they just don't speak to you for the rest of the night and you have no idea why. And if you've lived with somebody like this long enough, you may have learned that if you were to go ask them if they need help, they will say no. They might even get upset with you for asking. I actually knew someone that would ask, can I help you or do you need help? but would always ask at a point where it was kind of too late to help, or it would actually be more trouble to accept the help than to just continue doing it yourself. And they would always do this in a way to make it look like, well, I did, I did offer my help, but you know, they didn't need it. And this same person seemed to be upset when other people would ask them, can I help you with something? Do you need help with that? And in my opinion, this is a projection. This is this person knowing when I ask somebody, can I help you or do you need help? That's actually my way of trying to get out of helping them while looking as if I did want to help them. So when somebody asks this person, can I help you or do you need help with something? They immediately get defensive and angry and sit and pout and sulk for the rest of the night. Well, of course, the same person, if you don't ask if they need help and you don't go help them, they will sit and sulk and pout for the rest of the, the night because of that. Another really simple example that I think a lot of people can relate to is if you are on the phone and you want to end the phone call, but you know that if you try to end the phone call, this person's going to take it personally and get really pouty and, and sulky. and you kind of get trapped just waiting for them to decide to end the phone call. And this can also apply to when you visit them or when you're hanging out with them and then you're done and you need to go home or you need to go somewhere else and you can't seem to figure out how to get away without severely hurting this person's feelings. So this whole technique, this pouty sulkiness is a very passive aggressive way of making you feel like you're more obligated to this person than you really are, that you owe so much more than you're giving. And you can get stuck in this permanent feeling of always hurting this person's feelings on accident and walking on eggshells, not so much to avoid being yelled and screamed at, like what I usually talk about, but walking on eggshells because you're so afraid that you're gonna hurt this person's feelings or you're accidentally going to do something that's just awful. And I should add that these behaviors are certainly not limited only to pathological narcissists. I think all of us are capable of having these moments where we don't handle our emotions very maturely or we don't communicate very well with how we feel. But I think with narcissists, with some narcissists, with what we would call vulnerable or maybe covert narcissists, this becomes a habit. This is how they communicate. This is a permanent part of their personality. It's something that you can always count on them going to anytime they feel insecure or like you haven't done enough for them. So why do they do this? Why do they use this technique of pouting and sulking and maybe not talking to you for a while? Well, the first reason I wanna go over is just their pathological sense of entitlement, which causes them to not have any sense of boundaries with you. This sense of you owe me your time and attention. Like when the girlfriend and boyfriend went to go buy some yarn and, and the mother had this idea of, you owe it to me to invite me along with you on your little trip. I mean, maybe the boyfriend and girlfriend just wanted to go out together and just go shopping together as like kind of a date, but the mother felt entitled to be invited along to that because she likes to crochet too. And she felt hurt and wronged, like the boyfriend and girlfriend had done something wrong by not inviting her because she doesn't have a healthy sense of boundaries between her and her grown adult son. So this is a really important thing to remember when you're dealing with somebody that does this all the time is they have a very poor sense of boundaries 
and they feel entitled to sit and sulk and pout about things that really shouldn't have had anything to do with the person that they're directing their anger and frustration at. Another reason that narcissists will do this is just because they want all the attention on them. When somebody is sulking and pouting and acting as if they've been so hurt and so wronged and their feelings are so hurt, then, you know, hopefully everybody will stop and pay attention to them. And hopefully there'll be a whole bunch of drama circling around how bad the narcissist feels and what a victim they feel like and how everybody needs to apologize to them. Narcissists feel a lot more important and relevant when everyone is paying attention to them and they really feel quite threatened and quite irrelevant and extremely uncomfortable when people aren't paying attention to them or when people are ignoring them or when people are going about their lives doing things without them or without them in mind. So getting upset and being hurt and victimized is just a way to make the people that care about them stop and pay attention to them and make them feel relevant and important again. Another reason narcissists will do this is to control people. This is a pretty effective way to control people that actually care about you. When you have people in your life that really care about how you feel and care about making you happy, all you have to do is sit and be all butthurt about something and you can get a lot of people to change their behaviors and do things the way you want them to do by being hurt and pretending that what they've done has injured you so greatly. So this is a really good control technique for narcissists and as I've said many times before, narcissists are all about control. If they can't control you, they really don't have much use for you at all. And so this can be a really important way for them to control other people. And what this also does is it trains people in their life to do things their way. If you sat and watched TV one day while they were cooking, and then they gave you the silent treatment for the whole rest of the night because you didn't get up and help them cook, well, next time they're cooking, you might decide to go help them because you don't want to go through that again. So narcissists might be training you of what you need to do next time this happens. Next time you go yarn shopping, you better invite me along or I'm going to sit and pout for the rest of the night. Another reason narcissists will do this is to shame you and to make you feel like you're not good enough, that you've been bad because you hurt their feelings and you didn't think about them and you're so selfish and you only think about yourself and you go yarn shopping without even inviting them and you sit and watch TV while they're out in the yard weeding the garden. You're so lazy and selfish. And if they can convince you that you are this horribly thoughtless, lazy person that doesn't care about them, then they can feel like they're the better person. They're the one that really cares. They're the one that really thinks about you and you're the one that just sits there and thinks about yourself. And this can be a really effective way for a narcissist to convince themselves that they are superior and that you're inferior and that you know, they're, they're the good person that always thinks about other people. They're the one with the big heart. They're the generous one, the hardworking one. And you're the lazy, thoughtless person that just sits around and doesn't help people. And one more reason that they do this is just because it's really the only way that some of them know how to communicate. Narcissists are horrible at communication. Part of it is they don't want to communicate. So they find very toxic, manipulative ways to communicate their needs because if they were to actually come out and be honest about the way that they're feeling about things, that would make them feel far too vulnerable. They don't trust people around them enough to be honest about what they want. So they have to find these indirect, confusing, tricky ways to communicate what they want from people instead of just coming right out and communicating directly. So for the narcissist that was cooking all day, instead of coming to you at the beginning and saying, hey, can you help me with the cooking right now? They will sit there and cook for two hours and then come to you later and sulk and pout and maybe not even tell you that they're sulking and pouting because you didn't help them cook. But they won't just come right out and communicate 
at a reasonable point in time where you would be able to fill, fulfill their needs for them, they will wait until it's too late. They will wait until you can't do anything about the thing they're upset about. They will corner you. They will set you up on purpose so that you can't do what it is that they're asking you to do. Instead of saying, hey, next time you go yarn shopping, would you mind inviting me along because I'd really like to go? They can't communicate like that. So instead, they'll just sulk and pout for the rest of the night and make you pay for this wrong decision that you've made. This type of narcissist is someone that you really need to build strong emotional boundaries around. You really need to learn how not to take this personally and to resist the urge to try to control this person's emotions back. I mean, this person's trying to control you, but a very common yet unhealthy reaction to this would be for you to take responsibility for the narcissist's feelings and try to control them. So to try to make this person feel better and take responsibility for that. When you internalize this responsibility, this is what they want you to do. You may start struggling with guilt and feelings of unmet obligations, feelings of shame that you're not good enough. You're not a good enough sister. You're, you're, you're a bad daughter you're you're a bad son you're a bad husband you're a bad wife you don't do enough you're thoughtless you're selfish and you can really start to internalize this and try to control the narcissist's reactions to just the way you naturally are in order to make yourself feel better about yourself but you will never be able to accomplish this because the narcissist needs you to feel inferior the narcissist needs you to feel guilty needs you to feel like you're not doing enough. Nothing you ever do for a narcissist will ever make them happy, will ever make them stop and finally say, oh, you know what? You're finally doing enough for me. I'm actually really happy with the way you've been the last few months. Everything's enough. You're finally getting it. They, they will never, that will never happen. You'll never be enough for them. You might have moments where they give you some crumbs of appreciation just to keep you believing that it's possible to please them, but you will never ever be enough for them. And if you don't set up those emotional boundaries, that could eat you alive over time if you really believe that their emotional welfare is your responsibility. It's important to really internalize and understand and believe that you are not responsible for making this other person happy. All you can do is just the best that you can do with a reasonable amount of thoughtfulness and a reasonable amount of, you know, not being a jerk to somebody. Um, that's the best that you can do. You can't be expected to devote an enormous amount of your time and energy into desperately trying to make somebody happy that's just never happy with you. It's not your problem that this person is always upset. And I know it's really hard to let go of that when you've been so conditioned to take responsibility for it, but that's what you really need to work on is putting up those boundaries and not allowing yourself to feel the responsibility and the guilt for somebody that's never going to be happy. And finally, it's important to remember that if somebody isn't communicating clearly with you, if somebody's just sitting there sulking and pouting and they're not coming to you and talking to you and explaining what's wrong and trying to communicate, it's not your responsibility to approach that person and try to get a dialogue going. I mean, probably many of us have experienced approaching somebody like that and asking them, are you okay? Is something wrong? And nine times out of 10, they'll probably say something like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I mean, really, they just want you to keep asking them and they want you to spend the rest of the day or the night just wondering like, what's wrong with them? Are they okay? Did I say something? Did I do something? Are they mad at me? Or they just want you to sit there for the rest of the night worried about it. It's just a really great way to control your emotions and make you pay for not making them feel great for the rest of the night or for not reading their minds. If you take nothing else away from this video, what I really want to get across here is if you have had prolonged exposure to this type of a narcissist that uses passive aggressive, non-communicative pouting and sulking 
in order to control you and make you feel inferior, make you feel like you're not good enough. I just want you to know that if you've ever worried about being a, a bad wife, a bad mother, a bad son, a bad daughter, a bad friend, that you were always good enough if you cared enough to even worry about this or to feel bad about it you were always good enough it has nothing to do with how much you've failed somebody or the things that you did or didn't do it has to do with someone that cannot see the worth in you that cannot see the worth in anyone someone that can only see how everyone around them fails to solve their emotional problems. A narcissist will never be able to recognize or appreciate how much you actually do care, how much you actually do try. They cannot see those things and so they cannot see how much you're actually worth and how much you actually do care. So I hope that you're able to see that and you're able to recognize how much you actually did deserve respect and appreciation through whatever it is you've been through with this person. You were always good enough, even if the narcissist has never been able to see that. I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks. Bye.